Modular 2 is a great language in general, and it's a good choice for programming on CPM. There's three good compilers available for CPM. There's uh, Turbo Modular 2, FTL Modular 2, and uh, Peter Hochstrasser's Modular 2. Nicholas Firth based Modular 2 on his earlier language, Pascal. So Modular 2 introduces modules to allow separate compilation of related code and data structures, which are encapsulated to provide tighter control of scope. Modular 2 also supports coroutines, which makes single processor concurrency relatively simple and provides easy access to low-level hardware. In this video, I want to briefly show the three compilers and then at the end, run a benchmark on each of them to compare the speed and size of the resulting executables. I'll begin with Turbo Modular 2. It was released in 1986 by Echelon under license from Borland and then quickly withdrawn. It's based on Turbo Pascal, so it has a similar ID. Uh, certain procedures such as write line and read line uh, replicate their use in Turbo Pascal rather than how they're used in other Modular 2 compilers. And we get the same ability to configure the key commands and terminal and generally the environment is very much like Turbo Pascal. So this is the smallest of the packages at about 200k. Uh, the ID is a single executable, which makes it really easy to switch between compiling, linking, uh, editing, and various other file handling operations. And the compiler can output either intermediate code called mcode or native code. Uh, the former compiles quicker and is said to be uh, uh, less than a third of the space of native code, but it's interpreted and therefore it runs slower. Uh, but it's possible to combine the two so that you get the best of both worlds. Turbo Modular 2 makes it really easy to call machine language from the Modular 2 code. Uh, one of the easiest ways is to create a COM file, and as long as it's uh, relocatable, uh, it'll, be it'll be called with a consistent environment so that parameters can be read and a value returned to it. Then we just use a code statement within our Modular 2 code uh, to name the executable, and then it'll be called at that point. The other way we can do it is by linking Microsoft relocatable files, which is a little bit more complicated, uh, but it does mean then that we can call code uh, created by Microsoft Fortran, for example, or, or Pascal MT+. So Turbulent Modular 2 comes with a good selection of modules to handle uh, the normal things you'd expect, including modules to aid working with the terminal and to provide access to the CPM BIOS and BDOS calls. There are links in the associated article on the Tech Tinkering website to an archive for the compiler and also a manual. So uh, enough to get you started. Well, Turbo Modular 2, it's a, it's a nice implementation. Uh, the ID works really well, really well integrated. The compiler is quick. Um, my slight worry is that it wasn't out for very long and therefore uh, is known to have quite a few bugs. So that can be a bit of a pain, but they're not insurmountable. People seem to get around them quite well. I'll turn now to FTL Modular 2, which aims to closely implement the Modular 2 language and modules as described by Nicholas Firth in his book Programming in Modular 2. And it does a good job of this. It's the version I have the greatest confidence in, considering that it's gone through multiple revisions over quite a long period of time. The, uh, the latest version I've found is dated uh, 26th of July 1988. The, uh, the package comes with an editor, compiler, linker, assembler, debugger, library manager, lots of things. It also has utilities to configure the terminal and search paths. Uh, the search path can be really useful because it allows us to spread our modular 2 files over several drives without having to constantly specify the location of source and output files, which is particularly useful if running from floppy drives or RAM drives, as this is much bigger than Turbo Modular 2. It's about 600k and therefore we can split it over multiple drives. The terminal configuration is used by the built-in editor, as well as the screen I.O. module, which provides functions to move the cursor, set attributes, etc. The, uh, the editor is integrated with the compiler, which allows us to compile from the editor and then return back to it. It can edit up to three files in split screen mode, and I find it to be a very quick and comfortable editor. The editor generally uses WordStar key combinations, which is the same as uh, Turbo Modular 2, but it has the addition of uh, macros inspired by Emac. There are two good manuals, av manuals available for it, which I link to on the associated article on the Tech Tinkering website, uh, as well as a, a, an archive if you want to have a play with it. It, uh, it provides a full range of modules, so we can do the things that we could do with Turbo Modular 2, uh, access CPM, BDOS and BIOS, data structures and calls, uh, there's the terminal handling facilities. Compiler and Linker takes a much wider range of options than Turbo Modular 2, and this can be really useful for reducing memory or speeding things up, uh, so uh, it's good to have those uh, availability. And overall, yeah, as I say, this is the one I've got the greatest confidence in, it's really nice to use, uh, lots of functions, lots of facilities, 
and something I'd be confident developing in. The last compiler I want to talk about is Peter Hopstrauss's. He made his Modular 2 system for CPM more freely available in 2002. His release statement, the Manual and 3 Disk Archives, uh, dated 4th of June 1985, are available on the unofficial CPM website, which I'll link to in this related article. Uh, it's about the same size as FTL Modular 2 at around 600k, and like it, we can spread the files over multiple disks and configure search files. But uh, despite the large size, this implementation is the only one that doesn't come with an editor. Uh, as with the other compilers, this Modular 2 comes with a great selection of modules, including support for making CPM, BDOS and BIOS calls, but it doesn't have the terminal support, so if we wanted to do things like moving a cursor around, then we'd have to write our own modules to do that. The, uh, the compiler and link have a number of options, but unfortunately they don't have anything to speed up execution, so we can't turn off range checking, for example. Uh, we can call machine language routines. Uh, we do this, uh, we can link to Microsoft relocatable files in a similar way that, uh, to which can be done on Turbo Modular 2, but a little bit more complicated. And that's really all I have to say with this Modular 2. I haven't used it a huge amount, and uh, it doesn't have an ID, so there's not really an awful lot to show other than calling it from the command line. I'll finish this video by showing a very quick benchmark. I'm using a prime sieve benchmark, which uh, we can see here using the uh, FTR Modular 2 editor. And any benchmark that I use would be flawed, uh, because compilers will often have types of code that can compile into an executable that runs faster or is smaller than another. However, uh, this is what I'm going to use. It contains a number of operations that are quite useful, iteration, branching, array access, that sort of thing. And this table shows the average build time, so the compiling and linking, the execution time for the various compilers and options. Uh, these tests were performed under Z80 pack, running at 4 MHz, and therefore it doesn't allow for the increased disk access time for a real system. So we can see in this table that there's no clear winner, but depending on our priorities in terms of build time, execution, or executable size, we might favour one compiler over another. It's also very specific to the code tested. If we'd used a bigger program and execution time wasn't an issue, then perhaps the more compact M code would have shone. But either way, Modular 2 is a language worth considering for your next project on CPM. Hopefully this quick comparison will help you to determine which one to use. Whichever one you choose, the language is pretty similar between the three, so it would be easy to port from one to another. There's more information about these compilers in the associated article a link to in the uh, description below. Have a look at some of our other videos and do subscribe.